and you are trying to do the necessary mathematics and trying to find out v as a function of t then x as a function of t blah 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 it may get tedious okay i will tell you hello students today we will solve a question from mechanics in which even if you understand the physical concepts very well the mathematics part might get very tricky so here is the problem a motorcyclist wishes to travel in a circle of radius r and the coefficient of static friction between the tires and the horizontal ground is constant okay the motorcycle starts at rest what is the minimum distance the motorcycle must travel in order to achieve its maximum allowed the speed that is the speed above which it is going to skid out of the circular path uh, there is a circle or circular track on which you want to ride a motorcycle you start from rest you go on accelerating and of course you all must be knowing that there is a maximum allowed speed beyond which if you try to move you will skid out of the circular track so what is the minimum distance that you need to travel on that circle to attain that maximum speed all of you who want to give it a try please go ahead for rest of you i will explain the physical concept first and then you may start doing the mathematics part let us see how it goes so this gentleman this motorcyclist wants to move on a circular track right let us say he starts from this particular point initially initially his velocity is zero so when he starts there is no radial acceleration v square by r is zero the speed is zero so the whole of friction the complete friction force the maximum friction force Uh, which is mu into mg mu into normal reaction the complete friction force will be acting tangentially if there is no slipping there is static friction and let us assume that the static friction is at its maximum value this is necessary because you want to uh, attain the maximum speed maximum allowed speed by traveling through minimum of distance so we will assume that all the time friction is at its peak value you will need to act, uh, adjust the accelerator uh, so that friction is at its peak value so initially the whole of friction force will be in tangential direction and your acceleration will be in tangential direction only v square by r is zero there is no radial acceleration right so you will have maximum tangential acceleration right now that means your rate of change of speed is going to be maximum initially a time later uh, somewhat later when you reach here now you are having some speed so in order to be able to move in circular path there must be some radial force there must be some radial acceleration so now the complete friction cannot be used to accelerate you the part of friction force will be directed towards the center of the circle and a part of it will be there to accelerate you so the speed is low so the radial force required is small so a part of friction can do the job the rest of the friction will be in tangential direction so here there will be a radial force that means there will be radial acceleration as well as there will be a tangential force <laughs> right and both these tangential and radial forces are being provided by friction basically these two forces are two perpendicular components of friction force so your speed goes on increasing you reach here what is happening when your speed increases the radial force will grow it will increase v square by r is increasing so mv square by r the required radial force the required centripetal force will increase mind you friction has got a fixed magnitude mu mg assuming that it is always at Uh, the largest value it is always at its limiting value so the friction force has got fixed magnitude but now because the speed has increased 
a larger component of friction force will be in radial direction and the tangential component will become smaller. So, this is what the diagram is showing. Initially, the complete friction is tangential. Now, the radial component is there, tangential component is there, friction is somewhere in between here. And some somewhat later on, the radial component will grow, it will increase in size and the tangential component will become smaller. So, this will keep on happening as your speed increases, the tangential friction goes on decreasing and the radial friction, the radial component of friction goes on increasing. So, after some time, when you have attained your top speed, top allowed speed, the complete friction force, the complete friction force is in radial direction. Now, the total friction force mu mg is required to provide you the necessary centripetal force. So, there is no scope of any tangential friction now. So, there is no tangential acceleration. After this, you can move with this constant speed and the friction force will remain at its peak value so as to provide you the uh, required centripetal force. So, I hope all of you understand what is happening. Initially, the friction is completely in tangential direction. Then friction will have two perpendicular components, one along radial, one along tangential direction. The radial component keeps on growing, growing, growing. Tangential component goes on reducing, reducing, reducing. And finally, when your bike is at its peak speed, the complete friction force is radial and there is no tangential component of the friction force. So, at this instant, bike is moving at its top speed. The question asks us, to find this minimum distance that the bike must travel in order to attain its peak allowed speed. So, now students, the concept part is over. So, if you want to give it a try, you can start now or if you are not clear how to set up your equations, wait for one more two, a couple of more minutes, I will explain something more. So, at some intermediate point like here, this is the situation. This red arrow is the actual friction force which is mu mg and it has got two components along the radial direction and along the tangential direction. Let us assume that, let us assume that uh, the angle that the friction force makes with the tangent is pi. You can consider either of these two angles, isko ya isko kisi ko bhi le lo. I am assuming that friction force makes an angle phi with the tangential direction, right. So, the component of friction that is along the radius f sin phi, f sin phi, f is mu mg. So, mu mg sin phi will be equal to mv square by r at this instant, right. And the component of friction that is along the tangent that is f cos phi, mu mg cos phi is mass times dv by dt, where dv by dt is rate of change of speed, v is speed. So, using these two equations, you can give it a try. So, still uh, you can pause the video and give it a try. Okay. Uh, the basic thing is some of you must have tried it on your own and you must have got entangled in the cumbersome mathematics. The mathematics may become a bit tedious uh, if you uh, make x and t as variable. Like you might be thinking that let us assume that this motorcycle has traveled through a distance x. So, its speed is dx by dt, right. So, in place of speed you are writing dx by dt and you are trying to do the necessary mathematics and trying to find out v as a function of t then x as a function of t blah blah blah. It may get tedious, okay. I will tell you the shortest path. Many a times, uh, setting up of the integration in proper variable uh, makes the mathematics easier and this is one example of uh, such type of cases. So, let us move on. Uh, this is the situation and this is the solution that I have written. Uh, हमने फिर से इंटरमीडिएट सिचुएशन पे रखा है इस मोटरसाइकिल को दिस इज द फ्रिक्शन रेडियल कंपोनेंट टेंजेंशियल कंपोनेंट सो नाउ म्यू एमजी sin फाइ सो सॉरी म्यू एमजी sin फाइ व्हिच इज द 
mu mg sin phi which is the radial component of friction force must be equal to mv square by r no doubt about it now what i have done is i have differentiated this equation with respect to time i am differentiating this equation with respect to time so mu mg mm cancels out so mu g differentiating this with respect to time is cos phi d phi by dt and here you get 2v dv by dt r remains as it is what i am trying to do is i am going to make phi my key variable the angle phi as my key variable what i have observed actually is that when the motorcycle is started the entire friction force is in tangential direction and in the final situation the friction force is perpendicular to tangential direction so this angle phi this angle phi changes from 0 to pi by 2 can you see that the friction force makes an angle phi with tangent initially the friction force is along the tangent finally friction force is perpendicular to tangent so this angle phi changes from 0 to pi by 2 and this is what i am going to do i am going to make phi as my key variable uh, i'll try to find out distance traveled by the time angle phi changes from 0 to pi by 2 this is the trick abhi bhi karna chahte ho kar lo how they go so radial force mu mg sin phi is mv square by r differentiated with respect to time gives you this equation let me call it as equation 1 and the tangential force which is f cos phi mu mg cos phi mu mg is friction cos phi is m times dv by dt the tangential force is mass times rate of change of speed right so now what i am going to do is using this first equation i will eliminate dv by dt altogether from here dv by dt can be written as this into r by 2b so i will substitute for dv by dt from this equation into this equation so i have done that substitution and the whole thing after necessary calculations boils down to this so i have written the same two equations the radial and the tangential nothing else can be done actually as far as physics is concerned but the mathematics part i have differentiated this with respect to t now dv by dt whole dv by dt has been expressed in terms of d phi by dt tick now uh, this cos phi cancels m cancels whatever cancels cancels basically you can make it out on your own so what i am left with is this simple equation now there are two variables phi and t phi and t now t bhi to mujhe nahi chahiye hmm hmm na what what i need is integral of v dt what is v dt v is speed so integration of v dt is nothing but distance traveled so i just integrate this equation on both sides here here i integrate this equation on both sides this this last equation on both sides and integral v dt is my required distance so i am integrating this for time when phi changes from 0 to 0 to pi by 2 as i have told you earlier that the angle phi changes from 0 to pi by 2 by the time the motorcycle attains its peak top speed so this is distance travel so this distance travel is simply r by 2 into integral of d phi which is pi by 2 so this distance travel is pi r by 4 pi r by 4 oh, 4 great whatever be the value of coefficient of friction doesn't matter uh, in order to attain the top speed the motorcycle must travel through a distance of pi r by 4 ab dekh kya rahe ho video like kar do thoda share kar do और खुश हो जाओ कि तुमने ये क्वेश्चन अच्छे से समझ लिया चलो मिलते हैं अगले वीडियो में फिर किसी नए धमाकेदार कॉन्सेप्ट के साथ गुड बाय